Good morning, everybody. Well, I guess for two more minutes, it's still good evening, but uh, we'll be good morning here pretty soon. If you first time here, my name is Logan, aka the Army Vet Trucker, and we're here in Kansas City today, um, heading back down to Dallas. Uh, this is the next day after the previous video. Yesterday was my first first video on YouTube, and I just had it posted, um, so it obviously hasn't been seen too much yet, but uh, we'll see how this thing takes off, and we'll see how this one takes off, and I'll use that as a basis to see um, how this thing's gonna work out. But anyways, we're on another Mac today, which is good. I like these Macs. I, I explained a little bit about it in the last video. Um, this one seems to be no different. Same old, same old. Uh, the only thing that changes on these for the most part is um, the number on the dash over there and on the front and then how much of a <laughs> an angle that the uh, steering wheel is is off center. <laughs> That's about the only things that change. But um, anyways, we're here. Uh, we already pre-tripped and everything. Um, I'm going to get myself departed out. We're about to take off. It's midnight here, so uh, it's kind of funny here on my uh, my ELD. Uh, like I mentioned, we use Samsara here, and I don't know if you guys can see, but I've got two and a half hours left on my cycle time, and it just clicked over to midnight, so we're actually going to be getting, it looks like almost 10 hours, nine and three quarters hours back here in a couple minutes once it registers. There it goes right there. Um, so that'll get us back into Dallas, and once we get over there, we're going to probably... Uh, probably take some ATO um, with ABF ATO is a, let me get my mirrors adjusted real quick with ATO uh, what it stands for uh, with ABF is um, approved time off I've also heard it called accumulated time off but I think the company what they like us to call it is is um, approved time off and it's unpaid time that you get when uh, when you reach a certain amount of tours and I know for me, most often what I do is um, take my ATO after six tours, which is the first little threshold that we reach whenever we're able to take ATO. And it's just an unpaid time off just to take basically your weekend, you know. So after after six tours, which, you know, I don't know if, 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 if y'all are picking up what I mean by tours, um, that's... Um, basically a dispatch one dispatch is one tour and um, so by the time you get six of those you're able to have your first chance to take ATO and, and you get um, 48 hours after six tours and then ABF's pretty cool because they uh, they um, also still give you your 10 hours if you're um, See where these yard guys are going. They're both going over there. But um, so you'll you'll be able to you'll be able to take your 10 hour rest, and then then your 48 hours starts. So you wind up getting 58 hours. So it's a pretty good deal, you know. Um, and you almost always have to wind up taking some sort of ATO at some point or you're gonna wind up in a really awkward situation. That's how I've kind of been this past week. It's been about nine or 10 tours since the last time I've um, taken ATO and it's gotten me in this weird situation like you just saw a minute ago. I was, I wouldn't have been able to make the run until just now, right when midnight, you know, I could have drove for two hours but then I would have just been sitting there waiting for um, my clock to reset, so kind of weird you know if you if you don't take ATO you'll we, we work so much that you will definitely be um, running on fumes per se when uh, change over to drive now we're at the yard um, but uh, but yeah anyways uh, that's just uh, how the ATO works and, and, and like I was saying it's like you'll wind up in an awkward situation if you don't take ATO where you're kind of just running on fumes and I actually had a a, a pretty interesting situation happened uh, never happened like that to me before when I was in San Antonio um, earlier this week um, basically what had happened was I got into San Antonio um, with I think about five hours left on my cycle time and um, I went to the bed in the hotel in San Antonio and 
by the uh, by the time midnight rolled around, you know, I had another dispatch. They wanted me to go um, down to Laredo first. So I was going Dallas via Laredo. So I, I was going to end up back in Dallas at the end of the end of the tour, but I had to go down to Laredo first. And, you know, as soon as I saw that, um, I looked at my hours and, and I looked at, 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 you know, my eighth day. And if you, if you don't understand uh, how the cycle time works, uh, let, me, let, me, let me know in the comments and I can give you a rundown on, on how that all works. But if, if, you, if you already know, then you'll know that you pick up at hours again after eight days. Um, once your eighth day, eight days ago, becomes nine days ago, you get those hours back. And um, that's essentially how that works. And I was looking back at my, my hours and that eighth day, the hours that I was getting back at midnight was, was zero. I, I guess I didn't work that day. That was eight days ago. And maybe I was on ATO or one reason or another. I, I just didn't work any hours that day. So <laughs> midnight rolled around, came and went, and um, I still only had five hours. And uh, <laughs> so I had to call dispatch. I was like, hey, man, you know, I'm, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that run. It's um, I only got five hours. Uh, you have anything going out of San Antonio just straight to Dallas? And he's like, no, well, no, you know, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to just wait until you have hours. And so I wound up sitting in the hotel for 26 hours, which, which isn't bad because here at ABF, we get paid for, for our, our layover time. After 14 hours, we start getting paid for, for, all, for time spent in the hotel. Um, so that's pretty good. So I still got paid. I just had to um, sit there and wait. And uh, I think my dispatch originally was starting at, I think I was supposed to leave at like 4 a.m. and I wasn't able to leave until like 7 p.m. And, and then I went right down to the minute, you know, basically uh, on my on my dispatch leaving, I, I left at 7 p.m. and you might be wondering like, why 7 p.m.? Well, well, it's five plus seven, that's midnight. So, you know, right there, right as my seven, the five hours that I had left counted down to zero is when I hit midnight. And uh, it, it just like you saw a second ago, as soon as midnight hit, the hours came back and, um, I was able to keep on going back the rest of the way to Dallas. And, um, but yeah, no, once we get back to Dallas today, we're gonna take some ATO, enjoy a, a nice weekend off with the wife, hang out and uh, get a nice little reset in and we'll come back again next week. But other than that, uh, I guess it's gonna be a dark drive here for a while until we um, start getting closer to Dallas. So. You know, I don't know how much recording I'll be able to do. This might be a, a lot shorter of a video than the last one. You know, I had to get through a lot of introductions, tell you who I was on the last one, but you know, now we're down to brass tacks per se. So um, this, is what, this is what it's like though, you know, midnight going to work. And uh, you know, there's a chance sometimes when you're out here at these other terminals that you'll get extended out and go further. Um, Albuquerque is pretty common with doing that, but um, here lately it's been pretty nice abf generally the way that abf operates for line hall is um you'll either do uh a lay down run which is you know pretty common sense you'll go out somewhere you'll lay down in a hotel and and then you'll usually come back home the next day and that you know two days is generally how it works for lay downs when you're away from home um like i said there's a chance sometimes you'll get extended out like albuquerque likes to send me to salt lake sometimes and then vice versa and um, I've been sent out by um, San Antonio like last week I, I got to San Antonio and they, they sent me down to the valley down to McAllen and back to San Antonio and that, uh, I wound up being three dispatches uh, away from home but that's all right you know get some good miles in and um, take care of business and then we also have our our meet and turns which is um, a newer thing for ABF you know I'm sure they've been doing it for a long time but they're starting to do more and more meet and turns as opposed to lay downs and you know we have a few, quite a few of them out of Dallas and then we also just have turn runs where you know the you're, you're close enough out of Dallas that uh, you can go there uh, and, and turn it and then come back but um, but yeah no if you guys have any questions about um, how everything works uh, with ABF anything that you guys would like to know specifically uh, feel free to leave a comment and I'll um, try to answer it as best as I can like I mentioned in the last video you know I'm still a newbie you know I, I'm just now getting past my first year so um, I know, like I said, I know the basics, but you know, anything too specific, I might have to, uh, uh, well, what's it called, uh, phone out for help. But um, anyways, I think I'm gonna let you guys go here. I'm gonna get out on the highway. We're gonna, so we're getting out 435. We're gonna head um, 
southbound over the Missouri River right here and we'll eventually get on um, I-49 south down to Joplin, I believe, and then uh, head start heading back uh, west. But anyways, we'll catch you guys here in a little bit. Ladies and gents, here we are. Uh, we are in Big Spring, uh, Oklahoma. I decided to stop at the Loves this time coming through. Uh, it was just a little bit easier to get into um, versus uh, the woodshed over next door. Uh, it was pretty packed, but Loves is really packed too here. We're in the middle of the night when all the OTR guys are getting their beauty sleep. Um, so it was pretty hard to find a spot over there in the normal spot but we're just gonna be here for 30 minutes so I figured it'd be fine to come up to the yellow line past the, the fuel pumps and there, there's like five other open fuel pumps over here so we should be fine I'm gonna run inside loves here stretch my legs use the bathroom and um, might pick me up a licky and a chewy but uh, we're having some issues with the GPS here um, it keeps telling me to go through Tulsa and that it's avoiding a road closure in Oak City and then down on 35 into Dallas and and yesterday I came um, through Durant and uh, Sherman Texas and you know on 75 and that was just fine I didn't have any issues um, you know there's some construction going on in Durant and um, that's the only thing that I could think of as to why that there would be a road closure you know everything else was free and clear um, so I'm not really sure. I'm going to play with this a little bit and see if I can't figure out if they're maybe go on to, um, Oklahoma DOT's website and see if there's really a road closure there or not. But, um, either way, you know, and I know you guys are probably going to see here that I'm not using the ideal setup for, um, um, truck GPS here. You know, I'm using, uh, Google Maps and then I've got Trucker Map here too, but, you know, the thing with Google Maps, um, do I recommend using it if you're a professional driver and you're driving a, a, a tractor trailer? No, probably not. But, you know, the thing is, it's usable and it's a very um, user-friendly um, platform. You know, it's got a lot of data and, you know, a lot. it's really, really hard not to use, basically. Um, and if you're careful with it, you can probably get away with it you know and I've been pretty lucky with it so far you know I'll, maybe not lucky is the right word but careful is a good word to use you know if I'm ever going somewhere that I've never been before um, I'll always spend a few minutes you know going over like right now like I've never been uh, on I-44 through Tulsa so I would you know sit here and, and basically go through the whole route and um, you know, make sure this is obviously an interstate, so it's going to be safe. But you know, if I'm ever on a on a route like um, going through Durant and stuff, that like U.S. highways, sometimes you can be on a U.S. highway or, or a state highway, and it goes into a town, and all of a sudden there's a truck route, and you're you're not supposed to be in in the town, you know. And you'll see the signs, and the map's going to be telling you to go go straight because it thinks you're in a car, you know. And and um, you know, it's not going to be put into account that you're in a truck and you you're thirteen six. Uh, for clearance so um, you just got to make sure you're keeping that in mind if you do decide to use Google Maps um, and, and you know I, I take some of my skill that I've got while I was in the while I was in the army um, you know reading a map you know being able to orient yourself and your where you're at on a map and you know what's what's good what's bad you know and and just a little bit of common sense here you know like so if you're looking at a map like, like let's see you know, like, it's, I don't even know if you guys can really see this, but, you know, if you're coming into a town and it's, you know, telling you to take a road that's looks like you're, you're going to be going through like a neighborhood or something, you know, odds are that's not going to be where you need to be. <laughs> and um, a lot of times some towns will have like a, a truck loop that'll 
that'll be the preferred route for you to go on and you know you just got to be able to make sure you're reading your signs and and if you if you see a spot like your map's telling you to go somewhere and your your instinct is telling you that's not a good idea you're probably right but um anyways i'll, I'll get, quit rambling on here um i'm gonna run inside grab stretch my legs and whatnot and then uh, i'll be back out here and we'll get back out on the road catch you guys here in a little bit <laughs> Alrighty, we're back. I uh, went into Love's and didn't really buy anything, just used their bathroom and walked around a little bit. Um, I was able to look on the website for Oklahoma DOT and I did not see any road closures on 69 or 75, so we should be good to go that, that way, back that way, excuse me. Um, so if we wind up coming up on the closed road, then you guys uh, can laugh at me, I guess, but um, we're about to get out here now and get off the interstate. We'll be on 69 South for a while. Um, pretty nice loves here, not too much to complain about. Um, pretty clean I guess you know these truck stops man they just uh, it's hard to keep them clean Get a lot of traffic through here um, didn't get fuel or anything um, that's one thing that's nice about um, ABF is a good majority of our terminals have fuel lanes there so you know um, and, and a lot of our runs aren't long enough to really need to get fuel uh, I've been with the company for a year and I think I've only used my fuel card maybe twice. Um, so that's pretty nice, you know, especially when you're when you're out in the middle of the day and with, with things the way they are now with, with fuel, um, you know, it can be hard to find sometimes. And then when you do find it, you'll have to sit there for who knows how long waiting your, your turn. So, <laughs> you know, so it's pretty nice that we can get it at the terminal whether whether a hostler gets it or um, or we get it, you know, one way or another, um, we really don't have to worry about fuel too much. We're gonna get going out here. Um, pretty packed up around here. That's where I stopped yesterday. Not a bad place. Nice little uh, independently owned truck stop. Nice to still see those out and around. But um, hopefully it's going to be free and clear all the way back into Dallas. I'm sure it's saying we're going to be coming into Dallas around 9. So I'm sure we'll get to deal with some morning traffic. And that'll be fun. But looking forward to getting back, punching the clock, and heading home for a... Uh, for a nice weekend um but uh anyways guys not too much to talk about right now it's uh pretty dark out so i'm sure it's probably kind of hard to see much but anyways i'll uh i'll chime back in once we're too deep into it but you know in a nutshell you know ABF we we're an LTL company less than truckload is what LTL means if you don't know um, and, and if you don't know then then uh, LTL you know um, 
there's a lot of uh, information out there online, you know, videos and, and, and forums you can look into to, to get a better uh, idea of what LTL is, but I'll give you a basic a nutshell uh, definition of LTL is um, you are um, logistics for freight that is um, smaller than a truckload, uh, but bigger than a um, what would you say? Uh, bigger, than, too big for Amazon. You know, that's a good example. Too big for Amazon. Um, so, you know, what does that mean exactly? So, you, you know, you order a, a stapler on Amazon. It's going to come as a, you know, in, either in a flat envelope or um, it's going to come in a, um, you know, box or something small and it's going to come in an Amazon van. And that's how it's going to get delivered to you. But, um, you know, say you order a treadmill. You know, if you order a treadmill online, it's not gonna, unless it's all completely disassembled in 1,500 pieces, it's not gonna come in a, um, in a, uh, <laughs> in an Amazon van. Uh, most likely the way that it would arrive to you is in a, um, uh, an LTL carrier uh, in the form of a PND driver, a pickup and delivery, a local guy. And they'll come out with a, with a semi and a, and a 28 foot pup and a, and a lift gate or, you know, maybe a longer pup, but, you know, a lift gate trailer and they'll deliver it to you on a pallet jack. It'll be on a pallet and all packaged and everything and, and, um, you know, whatnot. And, uh, that's pretty much how that works. Um, but, um, sorry here, we're having to deal with this construction here and, and, uh, this gentleman up here in the police cruiser is, uh, not not going to constant speed you know i'm not trying to speed but you know he was going like 52 a minute ago and i was trying to pass now he's not but uh, anyways no that's basically what abf is we're an ltl carrier we handle mainly palletized freight that is delivered uh you know uh and picked up in that form you know like another good example would be you're an owner of a restaurant and um your uh you order a new oven for your restaurant you know that's gonna typically get delivered by an ltl carrier um, so, you know, who is ABF and, and like some of our competitors are different companies that are in the LTL industry, Estes, Old Dominion, Saya, FedEx Freight, uh, well, what, what's ABF, you know, how are they different? Well, the main thing, the first thing that you're going to notice about ABF that's different is we're a union company. Um, all of our drivers are Teamsters, um, even our mechanics, our, our hostlers, our, our yard guys and dock workers, they're all union as well. Um, the only people in ABF that are not union are the, um, the, the management, corporate, uh, dispatchers and all them. They're all just regular employees. But um, what does that mean? So what is the union? I mean, like there's a lot of controversy about the union. You know, there's pro-union guys and, and pro-non-union guys. And, you know, I'm not going to get too controversial here. I'll just talk about, you know, the basics. And, you know, you can form your own opinion, do more research on your own. But... You know, basically what the union is, it is a, it's a pro-work, you know, it's a pro-work environment, pro-job environment. You know, um, some companies, uh, if they have, you know, one, two, three jobs and, and this one person can do all those jobs, then they'll do it with that. That's cheaper for them. Um, ABF isn't like that. You know, if they have one job, they have one person. If they have another job, then now they have another person. Um, there's not going to be... Uh, any crossing of lines and if you are hired on to do a job you're going to be doing that job and then if um, someone else got hired to do a different job they're going to be doing that job uh, and vice versa so um, what does that mean basically uh, as a line haul driver I, I line haul that's that's all I do you know uh, occasionally I'll go into dark terminals on the weekends uh, what is a dark terminal it's kind of well, that's what we call um, terminals that are closed on the weekends, Monday to Friday, nine to five. Typically, the smaller end of line terminals are, are our dark terminals. Um, but there'll be occasional times I'll go into a dark terminal and um, have to uh, build a set of empties or you know uh, do some yard work. But it's rare. You know, and most of the time uh, it's all you know drop and hook. And, and by drop and hook, I mean um, you know. Uh, shoot, what's a good example? Uh, go from Dallas to Odessa, and Odessa's a lay down run. It's just barely too far to, to turn out of Dallas, so it's just right outside of that uh, that window, so we have to lay down there. Um, but Odessa is dark, typically on most times that we come in, and, and when we get there, you know, we'll have inbound freight for them, and uh, we don't, it's, when we get there, we, we don't go and, and break down the set and back the trailers into a dock. That's that's not our job, you know, that's that's, 
that's the the the, the, the uh, city guy's job, you know, or the yard guy's job. Um, so we'll go in there and we'll we'll just drop the set. You know, they typically have a, a specific area in the yard that they like the inbound sets to be dropped at. We'll we'll drop them and um, punch the clock. Go to the hotel. Uh, Odessa, uh, all the terminals are a little bit different. The procedures are a little bit different. Uh, but Odessa, we take the tractor to the hotel. Um, other terminals will we'll leave the tractor and, and uh, take a, a shuttle to the hotel. But you know that's just um, you know basically what that means. You know so. Um, you know, you can form your own opinion about, you know, if we're lazy or not, but, you know, it, 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 at the end of the day, it's just protect, protecting your, your fellow employee, your fellow union brother. Uh, it's protecting their job. You know, you're doing your job, you're getting paid to do your job, and they're also doing their job. And if you uh, step into their um, into their lane, so to speak, you know, coming from the military, we, we say, uh, stay in your lane, you know, and, and that's that translates to the union, you know, so you want to make sure you're staying in your lane, you're doing your job, and nothing more you know so um, but no getting more into ABF um, you know some pros and cons there's a lot of pros and a lot of cons well you know maybe not so many cons but you know everybody's different you know a con to somebody could be a pro to somebody else but you know in, in my opinion uh, I'll go through a few here while I have some time um, what's a big pro obviously the first thing that you're gonna find uh, with with being union is um, the health care and the pension you know the, the health care is less arguable than the pension or, or maybe controversial is a good word for it but the, the health care is great and that's a fact it, it is amazing health care and it's debatable that it is probably the best health care that you can find in the LTL industry um, we have very very minuscule out-of-pocket costs when it comes to health care you know you have you might have a huge medical bill an emergency with with a child uh, or, or, a, or a spouse and they have to go into the emergency room and have major surgery you are gonna pay you know one one hundredth or maybe even one one thousandth of what the full cost of that treatment was now, I am telling you you could have anything done uh, any emergency that you need to take care of any health care thing that you need to get done and you are not gonna you're not gonna need to worry about the money aspect of it you're gonna be taken care of and healthcare is one of those things that you know you can work for a company for 5, 10, 20 years and think you have great health care until you need to use it <laughs> and then uh, then you get that $5,000 medical bill in the mail uh, a few months later and you were like well I thought I had good health care sorry bud <laughs> uh, but no, that's one thing, uh, and then the pensions. The other thing, and you know, there's a lot of controversy about the pens, uh, controversy, controversy. Excuse me, controversy about the pension, and, and that's due to, to a lot of reasons. Um, but you know, I'll get into the facts about the pension, what it is. Uh, the pensions are retirement. You know, so so you work your whole career towards your retirement. Uh, as long as you stay with ABF, you're you're entitled to the pension. And uh, what that is is um, uh, all of us uh, working teamsters. Uh, contribute to the pension fund and, and uh, being in Dallas I'm a member of the, the central states fund and so every paycheck that I that I get earn with ABF uh, a little bit of it goes to the Teamsters uh, pension fund and all across the board all the Teamsters put into the fund and then once you work and work and work and retire all the retirees of the of the Teamsters that are in the central states fund draw money out from the fund and uh, you know, if you're a member of the Central States Fund, then you know, and you got the letter in the mail saying that the fund is losing money, and uh, there's money coming out of it faster than money is going in. And you know, I'm not going to dig too deep into that. You can do your own research and form your own opinions about it. But you know, um, obviously, I'm going to be a little bit biased. You know, I'm here. I'm a newer employee, and I'm hoping to work my, my pay in my dues and get towards the end of my career and, and retire and be able to draw out a similar retirement to what guys are getting right now. You know, um, in my honest opinion, do I think the, the pension's going away? I doubt it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very strong uh, root uh, of our company is having the pension with the, with the Teamsters. Um, now, different thing, do I think that it might be different than it is now um, when I retire? Yes, I think that it probably will be different. Something's probably gonna have to change. Um, you know, maybe not, maybe it could continue to go in the same way it is right now, but you know, obviously if, if it's losing money, then then there there is an issue. Now, it may be uh, a lot of things
things that are external that are not controllable by the fund or the teamsters that are causing it you know there's a global pandemic still going on and um, you know it's uh, the ripple effect has caused so I mean, I'm sure everybody knows it's been it's been a nightmare you know to live through this whole uh, ordeal that we've gone through the last few years so you know everything has been affected and, and the pension is not uh, invincible you know it, it's been affected just like everything else so you know it just needs to recover just like our economy and everything else so um, other than that you know, going into a, you know some more pros about ABF being a line haul driver we get paid for everything you know uh, we, we show up to the terminal we we get called on a call block then we, we show up at our pull time and say our um, say our set's not ready you know it's not ready for us to go yet uh, that doesn't mean we go out into the yard and, and find a tractor and then look for our trailers that's that's not what we do that's not our job as line haul drivers uh, all we have to do if it's not ready we sit there we punch the clock we go into the driver's lounge and we hang out we get paid uh, the hostlers will get it all put together for us and uh, once they give us our paperwork then we punch the clock again we got between those two clock punches we just got paid um, then uh, we go out to our tractor out on the ready line we and our trailers we do our pre-trip walk around we find an issue too easy we, we drive over to the shop punch the clock again uh, wait until they fix whatever the issue is once they're done punch the clock again between those two punches we just got paid once we leave the terminal we are, we're driving we're going to wherever we're going we have a blowout we pull off to the side throw out our triangles pull out our pay sheet write down what time the blowout happened take a nap whatever once they fix the tire write down the time we just got paid between those two times um, and then we obviously all get paid by the mile too for whatever the mileage as well you know in addition to whatever extra pay that we would get hourly uh, for any delays um, what else um, another pro uh, newer trucks you know uh, some companies struggle with equipment a little bit you know our, our trucks uh, is one thing that I can say it, it, it has been pretty good you know I'm, I'm driving a 2022 Mac Anthem right now it's a, it's a great truck it drives awesome it's very comfortable um, we don't have to worry about trucks not having AC trucks breaking down all the time you know I've been here a little over a year now and I've never had a breakdown with the truck you know and had to get towed you know I've had a couple blowouts but you know tires are tires that's just, that's just what happens um, but uh, you know some of our older tractors that are getting phased out are more problematic but it's been more and more uh, consistent that we're getting the newer ones now uh, and so that's a good thing and that's pretty cool you know that we have all this new equipment um, and so with that being said I'll get into a little bit of the the negative you know this isn't all just fairies and, and, and rainbows you know there there are cons to to ABF and you know it, and it's it, it's a bit a little bit to swallow so uh, I know it went down a little hard for me whenever I was you know first starting out and um, you know basically what I mean is uh, you know I'll, I'll just go ahead and say it elephant in the room ABF we're a seniority based company that's how the union works we we value seniority and so you know if you're a new guy on the bottom of the board uh, you're probably gonna struggle a little bit you know it's gonna be hard you know but you know it, it only gets better from there and you know for me my experience I got uh, pretty fortunate you know I hired on uh, in the summer of last year and uh, things were busy it started to slow down a little bit you know and um, uh, I think the longest I went without getting a phone call was four days you know and I, and I was getting starting to get kind of nervous and you know and that that was you know, a little bit of a, of a of a breaking point there but I'm glad I stuck to it because it's been worth it you know ever since the, the shoot just for the last month you know I, I don't think I have missed a single call block now and I'm only been here a year I've got about 10 guys underneath me maybe 15 now and uh, you know I uh, you know and it is summertime now so obviously the, fr the freight's flying you know so that's a good thing and so am I and, and, and so are my paychecks so, um, uh, you know but that you know like I said seniority is a thing here you know you have to start from the bottom and uh, work your way up you know it, it's not all handed to you you have to work for it you know and a lot of guys come from other companies where they had seniority or they didn't have to worry about seniority and then they come to a company that is seniority based and they struggle more than than I would have you know not coming in with a blank pick blank slate you know um, and I know the loudest people that complain about seniority and uh, say that seniority is bad are are the people that you know quit before a year you know they, they don't make it a year and those are the loudest people 
uh, saying negative things about seniority. So that's just, you know, my opinion. I don't want to argue about it. That's just, you know, we can all have opinions and still, you know, be friends. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, another thing is seniority based that, that is not uh, one of my favorite things about the company, I'll say that, um, is our, our driver board. Um, so, you know, a driver board, uh, we have a, a little over 100, I think 115 drivers in Dallas. Uh, uh, about half of them are on bids and the other half are extra board. And uh, the extra board drivers all go on a board, uh, avail uh, excuse me, an availability board. And you know, you think of it. You know, if you're thinking about common sense, how does a how does a driver board work? You think of it like a queue. You know, you're in line. You're waiting your turn to get called. Um, you know, so common sense. If if you're thinking about that, you know, you're gonna say, um, you know, how 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 does that work? You know, I, I come off my rest, my 10-hour rest. Uh, I'm available to work, and so I get in line. You know, say I, I get in line. There's three people ahead of me. So how do you think that works? You know, obviously a call block comes around. They, they get four dispatches. You know, they're gonna call the first person with all four. He's gonna have four choices. Then he's gonna pick one. Then three go down to the next person. Then two to the next person. And then I'm at the bottom. I get the last, the one that everybody else didn't want. And um, that's what you call a wheel board. And that's not what we have in Dallas. <laughs> so I'll tell you that, that is not how it works in Dallas. Um, some terminals with ABF do work like that, you know, and it's not seniority based. You know, you, you go into a queue and you get called in the order that you, um, that you joined the queue. Um, so um, in Dallas, we have what's called a hog board. So it is seniority based. And, um, you know, I'm not gonna go into more about my, like I said, it's not my favorite thing about the company and not my favorite thing about Dallas, but uh, it is what it is and I'll describe it uh, so you guys can understand. But um, what a hog board is, is a, uh, as you come off your rest and become available to go onto the queue, you enter the queue onto the board and say you're number four, just like the previous scenario, you're number four on the board. So you might be coming up on a call block and you're number four of eight. For, for example, you know, there's four people on the board, uh, say, and then there's four people below you. You're number four, and there's uh, four people below you. And so you got a pretty good chance of that on that call block of getting called. Uh, this guy's got like a flat or something, or his hubcap's about to fly off. But no, anyways, um, you, uh, you, you, you check again in a couple hours right before the call block to see, you know, if, if your position's changed, and, and then all of a sudden you're number nine. And then you're like, what the heck? You know, I was number four. What happened? Well, basically what happened is more drivers came off their rest since the last time you, when you, since you've become available that are higher seniority than you. And they, they cut you in line. And that's, that's just how that works here in Dallas. Um, you become available, you go onto the board. And if somebody else that's higher seniority than you comes off their rest, they cut you in line. And, and you know, obviously if you're at the bottom, there's a lot more people in front of you and you get cut a lot. Um, does that translate to, to, to nightmare scenario? Not really. You know, uh, most times they're, 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 they're uh, hiring drivers at a uh, pace that keeps up with the freight. You know, they're not gonna go and hire 10 drivers when the freight's not there. They do, they do long-term freight forecasts and they, they know what's coming generally. And, and um, you know, like I said, from my experience, you know, for the most part, I stay busy. And uh, you know, I made decent money starting out. It was enough to, 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 to um, uh, put food on the table and everything like that. Uh, I definitely wasn't getting anywhere close to what I could make, but you know, I was staying busy and, and for a good part of it, I, I was staying uh, uh, low on hours, you know? So I was so busy to the fact that I, you know, I saw a lot of points I, I wasn't even able to work more because um, you know, I didn't have enough hours. So I, I, like I mentioned earlier, I think the longest that I had went uh, in the last year without getting a call was, was, uh, four days. And, uh, you know, I was getting pretty nervous at that point, but you know, I got called, I got busy and they sent me to Albuquerque. And I, I think I mentioned in the last video, shoot, just going to Albuquerque back and back, that's 1200 plus miles that you're getting. And, you know, that's uh, shoot that, that by itself is, is enough to, you know, make a, you know, an okay week, you know, and obviously you're wanting more than that, but you know, just with that alone, you, you work two days out of a seven day week and you already made, you know, a pretty good, decent amount. But, um, but that's pretty much it. You know, that's, that's one of the big things that a guy, the guys struggle with. You know, I, I've seen guys come on at the bottom that come from other companies that aren't seniority based and, and they, they've left as soon as they've come on, 
you know, and uh, that, that sucks that they had to do that, but, you know, it's just they get here and it's a culture shock, uh, not, nothing like what they um, were dealing with at their last company, and, you know, and we, we as extra board drivers, we live by the phone, you know, so uh, whenever you become available, you know, you might play it out to where, you know, you're trying to work days, you know, and you can you can do that. You know, you can you can try to 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 time your your um, your runs and get arrive back at a time that's convenient for you to uh, come back um, on available at a good time for you. And you can slide and drop 24 and take your ATO all in different ways to make it work for you. And um, and then you can think you're playing it to, to 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 your advantage. And then all of a sudden you miss a call block, miss three call blocks, and then. Now your nights instead of days, you know, or vice versa. So, you know, you can play it out all you want, and then sometimes the freight won't agree with what you want. So, um, but you just got to make sure you have the phone on, and, and as long as you have people below you, though, you can pass. You know, you, I could get called at, at the 9 p.m. call block, and, and I'm one of four, and they have three runs available. You know, and I don't like any of them. I, I want to, you know, get a few more hours of sleep. That's fine. I can pass. You know, hey, call me back at midnight. As long as there's enough people below me to take all the runs that are available, by all means. There's no negative um, uh, re repercussions of, of passing or, or anything like that. So that's, you know, just something that we're able to do as, as line all drivers. So, and obviously the higher seniority you get, you know, the less and less the chance is of you not being able to pass. And, and you know, I know that there's people that, you know, go a whole weekend to getting called every three hours. and. And they'll, they'll just straight up say, hey, I'm passing until Monday. You know, don't call me back until Monday. You know, and that's just a perk of that seniority. That's what you work towards. And, and that's what your, your end game is, is to be at that level. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what my goal is, you know, to get there eventually. But right now I'm still, you know, a bottom guy. You know, I'm still bottom. And even though I've got, you know, a few people underneath me, you know, I, I can't, I still, I'm, I'm still out here. You know, it's, it's Saturday right now. And, 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 and then here, uh, it's the second right now, uh, July second, and then uh, I'll probably be working on the fourth. You know, but we get paid if we work on the holiday. You know, we get paid for holiday pay, and, and it's worth it. You know, so uh, it's another pro. But um, anyways, guys, I think I've talked just about enough here. Uh, probably getting a little bit long-winded, but um, if you guys have any questions, would like to know a little bit more on on um, anything else about the company. Uh, feel free to leave a comment, ask anything you have for me, and then uh, I'll try to get to it as soon as I can. But we're going to keep going in here to Dallas, so we've got about 45 more minutes, and uh, we'll be getting there. And, you know, things are probably going to start picking up here pretty quick. Um, but uh, I'll try to catch tune back into you guys whenever I start getting close into the terminal, and I'll show you guys how it all works once we get back home to, to our home terminal with uh, as a line haul driver. So catch you guys here in a little bit. Irving actually but you know Dallas um, we we're just getting off loop 12 there um, on to Irving Boulevard uh, we're turning left here off loop 12 just waiting for our light to turn <clears throat> we're um, when we come into the terminal we're gonna uh, probably pull in the employee parking lot uh, a lot of terminals with ABF like Kansas City is brand new and, and um, Albuquerque they, they have an employee parking lot kind of close to the ready line uh, like the ready line where the tractors are, are at whenever you go and, and grab them for your dispatch but um, Dallas isn't one <laughs> so uh, our, we have to park a little bit further away um, out in the lot and then go through the dispatch office to get into the yard and you know but one thing that they do let us do in uh, at the Dallas terminal is um, drive the truck as long as we're careful you know and, and when I have doubles I'll do a, I'll be a little bit more daring but whenever whenever I have a van like a 53 uh, I won't be as daring but you know I, we can go in between the the aisles I'll show you all what I'm talking about here and, and basically just you know pull the truck in uh, in and out between the aisles of the in the parking lot and um, you know grab our stuff because you know nobody wants to lug all your stuff you know half a mile to the ready line in the parking parking lot you know if you have to do it um, every time you come and go you know it, it gets to be a hassle but um, 
We've had a couple of issues with uh, people <laughs> not not being as careful as they should, and and maybe they're not as skilled as they need to be to, to do what to, what that what I'm talking about. And uh, a couple people have had their personal vehicles um, gotten a little bit too close to uh, some ABF equipment. <laughs> Let's just say that. Um, but uh, and I definitely understand it too because it's kind of a tight uh, tight parking lot. But you know it. It is what it is and it works out well for me and you know i haven't ever had any issues with it but uh, i just make sure i'm careful and, and i know my limitations so um nice little uh park down here uh, uh trinity river right here um if you go over the bridge right here and then get the beautiful view of, of downtown dallas there it's awesome when you come in at night and you get to see all the the lights and everything on, on the on the buildings it's pretty cool um but uh, yeah, this is basically uh, kind of like LTL Row here in uh, in uh, Dallas. Um, uh, some of uh, some of the bigger ones, FedEx Freight and um, Old Dominion, I think, have, have moved away from this area in, in, in favor of, of uh, newer terminals in a different area further away. Um, but you know, we're still here. <laughs> we're still going, um, and, and it works. You know what we have here works good, and, and it's fine. Uh, it gets the job done. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So. Um, we got a lot of stuff going on here. I know Central Transport is here, or uh, is it Central Transport or Central Tran? I think it, yeah, Central Transport. Um, Cause Central Freight, they, they, they don't they went away. I, I guess they they went a bust, unfortunately. Uh, then we got Southeastern over there, and you know a few other companies. Uh, a lot of dealerships for for uh, service departments, Penske service departments there, and you know a lot of other stuff. But we're right here is our is our terminal and. We'll give an eyeball. Sometimes when we come in, there's already a truck where I want to be, so I'll have to like think of a game plan. It's Saturday though, so it's probably going to be empty. Oh yeah, yeah, we're uh, no competition today. <laughs> right there is normally where I park, right by that tree, right there when I'm leaving, just so I don't have to wiggle waggle in here. But uh, um, we're going to do it right now, just to get a little closer to the to the car, the old Honda. Uh, it's kind of funny how you have to swing these doubles, man. It, it, it's like it looks weird when you're doing it, but it all works out once you're once you're set up. Here's the old Honda right here. And there we go. That's all there is to it, folks. Uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna go ahead and do our post trip here. On duty, post trip. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do a walk around, make sure we didn't lose any mud flaps or anything crazy. I'm gonna unload all my gear and break down everything and put it in the car. And that way, uh, once we go in there and, and turn it in at the fuel lane, we've got it all cleaned out already. Um, it make their jobs a little easier. Throw away all of our trash and everything. So, anyways, uh, once what once we. Um, Get everything taken out I'll, I'll chime back in you guys uh, so you can see where where how it all works when we pull into the yard and everything so i'll be right back all righty time to get this thing put away we're uh all broken down here got everything put away uh put up in the in the personal vehicle uh we're gonna go down into the terminal now or into the yard rather and um i'll show you guys where what we do once we're at this point um i usually just make a loop here and Usually I have enough room <clears throat> on Mondays and during weekdays, during the middle of the day or you know in the afternoon or the morning, this parking lot gets pretty packed and these guys will park. You see the red line there, that's where the, the end, even the yellow lines there, that's where they're supposed to stop parking. But you know, sometimes it's so full that there's nowhere literally to park and you know, so they, people gotta park, you know, they're not gonna go out in the street or anything. So um, sometimes they'll just wind up going a little bit out into the road way a little bit and uh it makes it tougher <laughs> to 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 wiggle in but you know with these like i was saying with these doubles you can you can maneuver pretty well um over here is a lot of our contract uh freight you know if, if we have any other trailers from other companies that, that's usually where they go or if we contract out uh some of our equipment to be moved by other providers they'll usually pick it up over there or over here 
Uh, this is our dispatch office right here on the corner of the building. That's where we go in to do our paperwork and punch the clock and all that jazz. We come out right here and walk down to the left there. And this guy needs to figure it out. Um, but no, over there to the left is our ready line. That's where all of our um, equipment will be set up for us and ready for when we when we show for our pull time. And we'll go over there. That's where we do our pre-trip and everything like that. I guess he's hooking to this trailer right here. I would have been a little bit faster breaking down all my stuff. Um, probably could have got in front of him. But uh, I'm going to see if I can't sneak by this guy. I think he's just turning around. Yeah, there's a ready line down there. Yeah, we're packed. Holy crap. They've got, a, they've got sets all over. They're probably not going to like it when they see that I'm putting in my ETO for the weekend. <laughs> That's our service lane right there, uh, quick lane for outbound. If you have an issue with your set, you'll just go through the through the shop there, and that's where they'll um, that's where they'll fix any issues or, or swap out the tractor if need be. But I'm gonna pull in here and get into the fuel lane. I'm gonna actually pull a little short and shut off the camera and, and get in the rest of the way there. But uh, this is our fuel lane. Uh, this is where we leave it, and the, the hostlers take over. They'll fuel it and all that stuff, and and that's where our job's done. But um, Anyways, that's going to be the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to leave a like and, and uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. And if there's anything in particular you'd like to see, if it's in within reason, I'll try to include it in the next video. If not, then uh, I'll make sure to chime back with a reply in the comments. So um, just let me know. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you guys and, and seeing if any questions that you may have or, or anything like that. So that's going to be it for this one. I'll catch you guys next time.